Welcome to the Monday Review, and I have a pair of floor standing speakers from Q Acoustic called the Concept 50s and priced at £1,999. And well, these are floor standers, but I would call them compact in a floor standing kind of way. Of course, they span 1,025 millimeters by 418 by 319. That's around 40 inches by 16 by 12 ish. So, yes, they have height and physical presence, but they look like they've just come out of the gym because there's no flab here. This is a trim and neat design with rounded corners. Now, this is not a flamboyant look at me set of speakers flashing its six pack. The Concept 50 design is demure, restrained, reserved. The Concept 50s might not have an ego, but there is a quiet confidence here, at least in aesthetic terms. Let's see if that translates to the sound later on. Hey, now before we get any further, because I can see myself drifting in techie terms, let's take a closer look. And welcome to the Closer Look section for the Q Acoustics Concept 50 Floor Standing Speakers. And, well, let's start upside down, shall we? Because the Concept 50s sit on a, on a slightly odd stand. And here's part of it, a kind of crescent-shaped bit of metal that sits at the back. The stand itself is paired back to the basics. Paired back just enough, that is, to stop the speaker falling over. So, even the speaker stand is unassuming. For that stand, what you get is a front plate, which is already fixed to the underside of the speaker when you open the box. At the rear is that pseudo crescent shaped piece of metal I mentioned that fixes to the rear with four screw in bolts. You also get a choice of feet, spikes, or round noses. Now, I dislike spikes, which I find couple themselves to the floor. And they kind of suck up vibration, which actually degrades sound. I much prefer to use the round noses, which I then sit atop my own damping feet. In my case, the recently reviewed Sound Deck Mark II Minis, link above. As for the speakers themselves, well, let's get personal, shall we? First thing you'll notice is the drive layout, the sexually termed Dapolito drive unit arrangement. That is, the 25mm tweeter sits tween two overly protective mid bass drivers. The tweeter is a sealed and isolated unit that floats free of the baffle. According to the company, well, it's hopes that gives these speakers lower distortion. Again, we'll see. The 127mm mid base units on the other hand are fixed to the aluminium baffle plate and then the whole thing is then attached to the cabinet now there's lots of attention to detail inside stuff you can't see take the crossover for example the crossover sits right at the bottom of the cabinet and it sits on an isolation platform as far away from everything else as possible the basic design inside fits a HPE, or to you and me, the Helmholtz pressure equalizer. This is a tube layout, first launched in the Concept 500s. Again, it's there to reduce vibration. 
And continuing that theme, the cabinet itself is a layered design affair, presented as a sort of layered sandwich with a damping gel core acting as a never hardening gooey jam filler. Then there's the point to point bracing, which keeps the cabinet fixed, stiff, and rigid. Speaking of bracing, do that if you ever pick these speakers up, because they weigh in at almost 23 kilograms each. That's north of 50 pounds. Around the back now, you'll find four chunky by wire terminals with added plates for basic stereo use and a base port. These six ohm speakers are pretty sensitive at 90 and one half decibels. So you're looking at a minimum amplifier output of, well, somewhere around 25 watts or higher. So how do they sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we will find out. To begin, I decided to go CD and played Portis Head's Dummy in all its trip hoppy beat bounciness. Ideal for bass examination, this one. It's easy for the bass to swamp and dominate this music, effectively killing the detail. So, this one notes any control issues the 50s might have. And what hit me straight away was, well, that control, the amount of sheer control that the Concept 50s speakers had over the lower frequencies. Well, impressive. The track, Rhodes, begins with a wavering, pulsing, keyboard-driven, low-end bass note. I would say that most speakers wouldn't even attempt to grab hold of this wavering bass note. They'd wait for it to do its thing and then try again when it's all over, but not the Concept 50s. The 50s grabbed that bass tone and then guided it, giving a tremendous sense of focus. This splayed bass note all of a sudden had a sense of form and even direction. So instead of sounding like bass notes blindly pouring from a bottle, it sounded like the Concept 50s were guiding a bass jet at the ear from some sort of sonic garden hose. What I'm desperately trying to describe here was that there was purpose where once there was a sense of disorder. The mid-range was also controlled. Sure, there wasn't quite the tonal freedom and high ceiling effect that you might hear from some expensive designs out there, but well, the Concept 50s approach wasn't that far off. There was more than enough information here to impress. Now the track itself, the music itself, eventually moves away from the claustrophobic wavering bass tone to a shocking immediate transfer to an open drum beat. That sounds like it flings the windows wide open and lets the sun in. This transfer from a more claustrophobic bass note to more open bass beats is quite stark and the Concept 50 speakers pull off that sensation with ease. The 50s also get vocalist Beth Gibbons, who on this entire album sounds like she's falling apart quicker than a heroin addict. That fragility of tone, the tears in the eyes, the nervous tics, the strained neck tendons, the unwashed hair, that sense of collapse. All of that, the Concept 50s have it. Now tell me this. How often has a pair of speakers conveyed unwashed hair? Actually, what I'm trying to get at here is the feeling from the vocal. This girl needs help, for goodness sake, and the Concept 50 speakers, well, they're just coolly documenting this fact in Technicolor. The sense of clarity from the 50s is welcome as well. You get a bank of strings joining in the fun mid-song. And you can hear that bow drag effect, the textural grain that gives the strings character. It's here and it sounds rather lovely. 
I then moved to Vinyl and a husky, dusky, sensual Spanish language track from Edie Gourmet y Los Panchos. And Los Panchos are a bunch of blokes with guitars and a conga drum standing behind her. And the track, Vereda Tropical. There was a sensuality that I was listening for here because it's the soul of this track. The Concept 50 speakers, they had it in spades. Gourmet's vocal was strong, full of potential power. But no, she just wants to seduce the socks off you. And the Concept 50 speakers, well, they tell you all about it. So you're in a mild sweat once the track is finished. Add to that the precision of the guitar strings and the reverb-laden slap from the conga drums, and the performance is both layered and rich. So how does it compare to other speakers I might have in my possession? Well, it doesn't have the mid-range reach of my Quad 57s, but hey, they're electrostatic, so they're a bit of a specialist item in mid-range terms. The 57s really don't have the bass performance of the Concept 50s, and the Concept 50s mid-range performance is very good indeed for a boxed speaker. In terms of cheaper Q acoustics speakers, well, the 3050i speakers are excellent for their price, but they don't have the maturity and that rich sound from the mid-range that you hear on the 50s. Other speakers like the Monitor Audio Silver 300s, well, they don't really have the same control that the 50s offer. You can really trust the Concept 50s when you hear their sonic output. So let me give you a few final thoughts, shall I? And then we'll look at some pros and cons, and then I'll give you a rating. Now, yes, the Q Acoustic Concept 50 speakers control your music, but they do so on a long leash, so they provide enough freedom to allow music to express itself and offer the sort of information that delights. But the 50s never allow frequency discipline to break down. In effect, what you quickly find is an increasing sense of trust, which I mentioned a moment ago, between you and these tall, yet rather svelte boxes. You find yourself trusting the Concept 50s, so you tend to relax, and that just adds to the sonic party. So let's look at a few pros and cons. To begin with, well, I just loved the bass control. It was a very precise lower frequency output. This meant that there was a whole heap of mid-range detail that was free to hit the ear. I also like the aesthetics, which I found rather demure and quite attractive. Finally, I also liked the installation. Yes, there's a stand you need to add, but that is a fairly quick installation. In the bad column, well, at this price, nothing at all. Which is why I'm going to give the Concept 50s an 8 out of 10 groovy. So, big boy, you looking for a good time? Well, try a pair of Concept 50s then. So, on that dubious note, I will bid you farewell. But before you go, can you click on the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so? And that just helps the channel to ride the algorithm waves of YouTube. Also, down there are some chapter heading hot links and other links to my Facebook group, my Patreon page, and also my website. And if you can support me via Patreon, it helps to fund this channel, so it's rather important. Now, I will be back with a rejigged Friday video. There'll be some news in there and other stuff. What other stuff? I have no idea. I'm going to have to have a little think. So, it'll be a surprise for both of us then. Hey, I hope you can join me on Friday. And until then, folks, bye-bye for now.